change the world. I'm Leo. Hello, bookish friends of the internet. Welcome or welcome back to Coffee Over Apples. My name is Steph. This is a very exciting video. Okay, so two things are happening in this video. One is that this is a review for Mistletoe and Michigas by M.A. Wardell, which I loved. It was so cute. It was so cute. I'm going to be gushing this entire video about this book, which is the complete opposite reaction of what happened when I read Teacher of the Year, which is going to be its own video if that hasn't come out already. <laughs> Additionally, I have previously done on my channel drawing videos where I would do speed drawings in relation to books that I love. And I've had the idea of turning that into a Patreon or a membership thing forever now. So I finally bit the bullet. I decided, you know what, I'm going to give it a try, muster up my courage, and I did a duel. So the idea is that I'm going to be making custom coloring pages that are downloadable printouts for you if you choose to become a member or Patreon for my channel. Each coloring page is going to be accompanied by a review video like this. I draw them out in my sketchbook beforehand to plan, so the coloring page is themed around the book that was chosen for this. If you'd like to have a vote into what book gets turned into a bookish coloring page for the next month's Patreon, please consider becoming a member. I would appreciate that. Membership is going to come with shout outs in every video, access to the monthly poll to determine which of the books I read turns into that themed coloring page, previous downloadable pages from all previous videos. And I'm thinking about eventually adding a tier where you can get like printable colored in bookmarks or coloring page bookmarks almost to like make your own bookmarks out of the designs that I make. But there's so many different ways that I can go about doing this. And we're going to start off with this Christmas slash Hanukkah themed from Mistletoe and Michigas. I don't even care that it is not the holiday season. It is the holiday in my heart. Okay, these two were so adorable. Technically, this is book two in the Teachers in Love series. Each book involves a teacher falling in love. It is queer. It is romantic. It is sweet. I just, mm, I ate this up with all of my heart. So you do not need to have read the first book in order to read this one. I would actually, personally, if you're anything like me, suggest that you not read the first book. Okay. It was like half a taste thing. The other thing was just like, not my vibe. But this one, this one. I'm going to be pushing down everybody's throats, okay? This book was so cute. We are following Theo, who is a Afghan war veteran, and he suffers from PTSD. He's the janitor at this primary school. Theo is Jewish. His Jewish parents are adorable. They are funny. They are a stereotypical Jewish parents who call him from Boca Raton and just are like, when are you going to allow us to get you a Yenta? And then there is Sheldon, who is the teacher. I think he's a first grade teacher. Um, and he's very sweet. He talks about not only just being the only male teacher in the elementary school, but being the only openly gay teacher and like some of the struggles that he gets with that, talking about how it is, how he built a relationship with the students. It was super sweet, super cute. What I loved about this is that we got a little bit more time in the classroom to see how the challenges in the classroom kind of affect his decision making and also affect how these two characters come together it's just so sweet. Um, Sheldon is Christian. So the turmoil here is that Sheldon was disowned by his Christian family for coming out as gay. He has a sister that he lives with who is super supportive. Like he's created uh, a home with his sister in which he can thrive and be his own self, but that doesn't mean that he doesn't have residual trauma from his... Um, parents giving him the cold shoulder versus Theo who has a really warm and open relationship with his parents but Theo is not very much like 
super openly gay it's like if it comes up in conversation he's not gonna hide it but it's also just like he doesn't care if people know or not versus Shelton who's very much more comfortably loudly and openly gay and is like listen yes I wear nail polish and I want my boys in my class to know that wearing nail polish doesn't uh it isn't a negative impact on your image like boys can express themselves blah 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 right like super super cute what I really liked about this book was the found family aspect aspect of this especially around the holidays <laughs> this really is one of the few cases in which i saw a fake dating trope be done so well i'm really picky about romance tropes i guess i mean i'm I, I just could be talking out of my ass because i'm still figuring out who i am as a romance reader but as someone who is obsessed with n telenovelas. <laughs> just fake dating doesn't usually do it for me. But this one was so good. And the reason for that is, is because it was so transparent. Sheldon finds himself in a situation where he is invited to his ex-boyfriend's wedding, where he's getting married to... I don't think he cheated on Sheldon. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. But he definitely was like stepping into somebody else's domain while he was still about to break up with him. And I'm like, honey, that's not a clean breakup. Like you had the next one lined up. So Sheldon was done dirty. You know what I mean? So Sheldon's heartbroken because he was in a serious relationship with this guy. And the guy was like, um, I'm going to leave you and go start dating my trainer from the gym. And then invites him like a while later to their wedding. So that's that's drama right there that I'm like, that's just messy. Personally, I'd be like, no. And if you want to hold a grudge, I am not mad at you. Hold that grudge, honey boo boo. Like, it's fine. But he's like, nope, I'm going to be the better person. I'm going to be the bigger person. I'm going to go to this wedding. And I'm going to bring a date with me. But this time, I'm not going to bring my sister because everyone's going to expect me to bring my sister. I'm going to get a boyfriend just for this wedding to show him up right so whatever there's a little drama going on there and so he's at school and Theo also wants to bring a date to Hanukkah dinner with his parents because his parents keep trying to set him up or keep like even saying like let us get you a yenta and he's like but i'm gay and then they're like well we'll get you a, a genta whatever like all these puns are happening it's super funny it's super cute they so in order to appease his parents who know that he's gay who are very loving and accepting of him and they're like we just really want you to be happy um he's like i need a boyfriend to bring to hanukkah dinner um so i forget who it was i think it was Sheldon, I'm 99% sure it was Sheldon who asked Theo first and was like, listen, this is the download. I need someone for the next two weeks preparing for this wedding, pretending to be my boyfriend. And then after that, we don't have to do this anymore. And Theo says, you know what? I'll do it for you if you do it for me. And they're like, cool, let's do this for each other. And it's perfect. It's like, okay, everybody's open. Everybody's transparent. They're going to hang out together. So they were like, listen, we want to actually pull this off. And even if we decide to like break up afterwards then worst case, we made a friend. And I'm like, yes, that's what I love. They were both openly transparent and communicated with each other. They both said, listen, at best case, we actually fall in love with each other and start dating. At worst case, I made a friend. So like win-win. And I'm like, yes, it is a win-win. It's so cute. They start dating. They decide to go to a couple different events together. Like, hey, there's a festival in town, like Christmas holiday Hanukkah, whatever festival, lights festival. Let's go to the festival together. So they're actively trying to create memories. Theo wants to cook for Sheldon because he, cooking is uh, just like a love of his. He likes feeding people food that he's made because it comes from his heart. He's very soft spoken or just like very minimally spoken, honestly. Um, and that's how he communicates his feelings is through food. And Sheldon loves to eat, works out perfectly. Theo is working through his trauma from Afghanistan and also working through being close to people, especially after going through battle and losing people. So 
he's got a lot of inner turmoil. Sheldon will not shut the fuck up. And it's great because he talks so much and he basically does the talking for the two of them. And Theo's like, sometimes he's like, yes, you're saying exactly what I'm thinking. I didn't have the words for it. And other times he's like, just be quiet and let me hold you. And I'm like, I really loved this all the way through and ultimately I ended up giving this 4.5 stars. It wasn't quite 5 stars because it just didn't give me that 5 star feeling but I got the warm and fuzzies. I got the new favorite holiday read feeling so like it's still probably going to be on my top 10 books of 2024 list quite potentially. The third book in the Teachers in Love series is supposed to be coming out in June. Featuring the principal and side rep for a character that was in book one. Um, OCD rep, I'm pretty sure. And it's called, what is it called? Napkins? Napkins and something. Is it napkins and other coincidences? Napkins? Something to do with napkins. I don't know, but the cover looks really cute, so I'll post it up here. This book is an adult romance. It's super spicy. But it wasn't as spicy as the first book. I feel like the first book, Teacher of the Year, was way more spicy. I feel like these two, because of the conversations that they were having and because of how transparent they were with their feelings most of the time, that it just, it felt less risque. So it wasn't that kind of spice. It was just like, this is hot and it's fully flushed out. They are two consenting adults. They know exactly who they are. No one need, seems to be necessarily like figuring out their own sexuality. They're just kind of figuring out what that means in like having a serious relationship or what the expectations are of a serious relationship. So I absolutely love this. So for the coloring page, this is a grumpy sunshine romance. So one character is extremely grumpy and the other one is a super bubbly pot of sunshine. There's the grumpy one, Sheldon is the super bubbly one. So we got two gingerbread men here who are grumpy and happy. Um, <laughs> Sheldon also really likes to wear cardigans. So I tried to do the little frosting in the shape of like a sweater. We've got latkes, which are relevant because there's an entire like celebration of Hanukkah scene with Theo's family, which is super wholesome, where Sheldon learns to make latkes. And we've got the dreidel, we've got the menorah, we've got Santa's cookies, we've got nail polish and gifts to represent uh, Sheldon and his love of changing his nail polish and making it match. Anyway, I love this book, highly recommend it. Let me know what you think of this coloring page. So for the first Patreon, in case anyone wants to become one of my first members, I'm actually going to have this coloring page along with like two more. So at least the first few members will have at least three coloring pages to choose from and download. And each month I will open up the poll so that you can decide what the theme of the next coloring page is. Like, did I read a horror book? Is it horror themed? Is it sci-fi themed? Is it space themed? Is it cozy themed? Is it reading themed? Whatever the case may be, I'll drop some ideas. You guys can tell me which themed coloring page you would like, and then you'll be able to download that at the end of the month. But anyway, so yeah, that's really it. That's what I'm thinking. This is super exciting. It's a big change for my channel. Big change for me, something that I'm really excited about. I really wanted to find a way to combine my love of reading with connecting more with my members, with supporting my channel, and have the freedom to create around the things that we all love. So thanks so much for watching. I post videos whenever I feel like it. Talk to you later. Bye. I'm Lido. What's the name, Mr. Wonka? Mr. Wonka, work the fact.